Hi guys, this is Aid from Witchbike.com. Today I'm going to be reviewing and taking for a ride my own PCX. I bought this from new in 2014, at the tail end of 2014, so it's uh, fairly new. I went for this bike because I just thought it was the most attractive one. I like the fact it had the uh, tank where you'd normally put your know, feet on a normal scooter, uh, which meant there's much more storage in the back, which I'll show you in a mo. Uh, also, this particular colour, this metallic red, I thought was particularly attractive. I was also probably persuaded by the fact that Honda is arguably one of the better dealers to go for. And the fact it had um, ABS all round, LED lights all round, which I believe it was a first. It's got LED front lights, LED rear lights, LED brake lights and LED indicators. All in all, makes it a particularly safe mode of transport. I think it looks fantastic really. The other big selling point of this bike is that it's dated to 130 miles to the gallon. I've had this, um, as I said, probably about four or five months. Um, I, so I'd get between 122 and 125, which is certainly good enough, particularly as I tend to uh, race the nuts off this bike, such is uh, my personality. Yeah, that's a good looking bike. As we uh, go along, you'll see the other reasons why I think this bike is particularly suitable for people looking to get into motorbiking for the first time, starting off with a scooter. Perhaps those who haven't got confidence levels as a normal rider, doesn't want to have the extra hassle of worrying about gears on top of all the other things you've got to worry about. This uh, PCX125 was from the uh, nice chaps over at Honda in Farnham. Um, it cost about 2600 and they threw in uh, a top box uh, Honda Special. It's a good thing about it, you can get a helmet, full size one, even a modular one like mine, flip up, in the bo box or under the seat. So it's a terrific amount of storage. And when two people are on it, it's surprising how much you can put away. Yeah, it's me. I'm happy with the purchase. This is another one of my apocalyptic statements, but it's, this is actually more fun than my Honda CBR600F. Because you just go on this, and you just go. It is literally twist and go. So you don't really concentrate, it's having fun, you don't have to worry about brakes so much. The traffic, everything else becomes less of an issue. Amazing. It's still got a fair turn of speed, still accelerates, you can still get past cars doing 30-35 for example. It's obviously fantastically well balanced and brilliant at um, filtering. So on a recent ride to London, it was the quickest I've ever done it. I wish I'd known about this years ago actually, it would have saved me pissing about on the train for 14 years. Door to door, bang bang, probably cost about 4 quid. It's about 25 quid for a rail card these days from where I am, going to London. Um, running costs, well, what can I say? I mean, again the bike was 2,600. Car tax, not car tax, tax is £17 per annum. And the insurance on this for me was £80 a year. Put that with 125 miles to the gallon. So a full tank goes a couple hundred miles for like seven quid. You're looking at a winner in my eyes. Okay, it's not going to be uh, great for motorways or dual carriageway sort of travelling. And if speed is all you want, you want to go for weekend fresh, then although this is more fun, if you want speed, this is obviously not the bike. There are a couple of suitably fast uh, scooters out there, but there's a lot slower ones, like electricity I rode, uh, one of the two wheels at the front. Um, that's quite a bit slower, it's probably just quite a bit heavier. This has got plenty of zip, it really puts a smile on your face. Most surprising. Right, let's have a little uh, look around it. Keys go down here, we'd expect them to be probably. As you can see, turn it to there, you can bring the seat up. With this model, as opposed to the 2013 and previous models, which had that big hump in the seat, now, people didn't like that. And often, changing the seat was the first thing they did. Honda obviously knew about this, so put a different seat on it. I must admit, it's very nice for me, and it's comfortable for pillions, they tell me. And you can see the space in here, fantastic. A full-size helmet can easily get in that space. Leaving you put, you know, a jacket here, or shoes, shopping. And I've been down at Sainsbury's and back on this thing. And I've put uh, two bags in there. Big bag in there. No problem at all, I just carried a helmet with me. Obviously, I wear it on the way back, so it's not a big problem. Also, 
What's these petrol caps down there? Remarkable idea. Got a little bit of storage here, and if you can see that, it's actually got the um, like a power outlet of the old cigar lighter and USB. And there's enough storage in here, and I've got quite deep. I'll put my hand right in there, and I've got a little disc lock in there. Goes right down there, so you can put your mobile phone and your wallet in there as well. Fantastic, actually. That, that comes in really handy. I miss that on normal motorbikes. Um, okay, let's start this one up. Get ready for the massive roar. Of course, it's a scooter, of course. Um, and like most bikes, actually, you have to put the sides stand up to start it. It's got a centre stand. Oh, I love that. I love centre stands. I think you might watch more of my videos about the Honda 600 I've got, and uh, I hate looking back at it. I mean, it's on its side stand. It looks like it's just going to fall over. In a, you know, someone farted on it, it'll fall over. Centre stand, fantastic idea. So, there it is, clutch in. Clutch, here's me going. Fucking hell, left brake on this, isn't it? Oh, listen to that. Oh, it's like a race bike. Right, let's pick my doves up. Okay, let's take this beast for a blast. Oh, look forward to it actually. I haven't done for a while. Obviously, if it's nice weather, I'll tend to take the sports bike out. But if it's a little jaunt, or a little shop, so I'll pick my wife and my kids up. Just want it forward off the stand. Yeah, love jabbing, look around, marvellous. Just do a little shortcut -y. Yeah! It's got a bit of speed, look. Woohoo! It's a bit terrible. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, I have my knee down. There we go. Whoa, whoa. Hey. From whichbike.com bringing you further reviews on the PCX125. Had to stop the other one, the microphone was crap. I've since learned how to do the microphone setup properly. Thank God! Right, saying that, it's bloody windy today. Even though it looks nice, it's uh, still winter. So, actually the first thing to probably answer is what made me buy this P6125? This is my very own bike, in fact the first bike I bought. It's a brand new Leap 2014 model, so it's the current model out at the moment, which will see you through 2015, probably last into 2016 as well, before revisions. Um, bought the red version as you know, because I found it the most attractive. Now, to be honest, I didn't look around massively at different scooters. I mean, the nearest dear to me is the Yamaha. I had a quick look in there, but they were either too big, you know, like 300, 500, whatever, or they were too kind of toy-like, you know, like they were 50 cc's or just kind of flimsy looking, traditional style scooters. So I went down to the local Honda garage, the nearest one to, to me is Farnham, I walked in there, saw this in this colour, in fact this exact bike, in the showroom, obviously brand new, zero miles, beautiful metallic red colour. And I thought, well, I'm having that. Now, I spoke to the missus. She's been against me getting a bike for 20 years. And I said, look, I've seen a nice scooter. It costs bugger all. In fact, I think it was £2,600. Payments are bugger all. And it's safe, because it's not that fast. You only have to concentrate on the accelerator and the brakes. And, you know, there's no worries about me crashing it or anything like that. You know. It's, it's a safe way to get about cheaply, much cheaper than buying a car. As I've discussed, the running costs of this are ridiculously low, especially when you compare it to trying to run a car. So, it was job done. She was persuaded. I bought it on the premise that I'd never get any other bike, that I'd never get a sports bike or anything faster because they're inherently dangerous. Of course, she has a point, and she probably doesn't want to lose me, the father of her kids. So I got the scooter. Um, I thought I was, I was mostly taken back by its looks. It doesn't look like a traditional scooter. Can you see down there? Oh, you can't see down there. I've got my helmet. <laughs> As you saw in the uh, walk around, it hasn't got the place where you put your feet. That usual empty place on a traditional scooter. It, the actual petrol tank's there. And I think actually it makes the bike look a lot better. It makes me look, look somewhere between a scooter and a, in quotation marks, a real motorbike. It just makes the whole thing look like one piece of chunky sexiness. 
So I was sold on the looks, and then I was sold on the rain costs, you know, the 130 miles to the gallon, which is a bit of marketing bullshit, you know, you're only going to get that going downhill rim behind, probably, at 20 mile an hour. But I suppose it's therefore possible, but I'm getting about 122 to 125. Um, actually, I'm going a bit of fault at the moment, well, actually, I'm breaking the speed limit already. I actually have been caught speeding down this road, albeit in the worst car. That'll serve me right for driving a heap of shit. Right, right, as you know, I tend to get lost, even though this is the neck, my neck of the woods, and I've been here probably, what, 300 times? Well, I'm not concentrating, or I am concentrating on the video login. I suddenly lose all direction. <laughs> So this is a done deal since I saw it really, and I've been thoroughly pleased with it. It starts, bang, on the first turnover, and did throughout the winter, even though I kept the bike outside. It just hasn't missed the beat. I had the 600 mile service, came to about 120 odd quid. Next one's not going to be till 4,000 miles, or in my case, one year. And that's likely to be about 140. So, uh, nothing that much to worry about, you know, 10 or 12 quid a month put aside, probably, if you're on a budget. It's got a good turn of speed. The handling is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I ride a sports bike, and I've recently ridden some fantastic super bikes, as you have probably seen in my video logs. And handling-wise, and ride-wise, this is excellent. It's up with them. You have great fun with this, you can get some ridiculous lean angles and you don't give a shit because you know you're not going to slide and if you do, well, okay, you might get a graze knee because you're not going that fast. Um, the weakness of this bike, I would say, is a back suspension. It grounds out very easily. Here's a bump here. That grounds out a little bit. It just gives a slight kind of metallically kind of nook sound. If you go over a bump too fast or a hole in the road, or a, or a drain cover that's particularly deep, you know, I say deep, more than two centimetres, then uh, it's not funny, it gives you a real big jolt. That's, that's the only real weakness of it, to be honest. Other than that, it's brilliant, it's fantastic at filtering through urban environments. I, I would race anybody on this versus any other bike going through an urban environment with 30 limits like London. Nothing is quicker than a scooter. You have a 1299 Panagali on S1000RR and you won't beat me going through London. Because you'll be worried about the really strong brakes, too much acceleration, scratching it against cars, you won't be able to filter it as nimbly as this. And I'll get off the lights for the first 10 or 15 yards quicker than the suit bike anyway. All in all, you know, a scooter's a fantastic proposition. For me it's a second bike and I use it for the longer journeys and also it's very comfortable due to huge group padded seats which don't rely on feel. It's hugely comfortable for pillion riders. I've got the uh, back box, in fact that was thrown in by Honda when I bought it. So at least I've got one freebie. And of course that means pillion riders have got their back against it and they're very comfortable. So happy days. Well apologies this, this is sounding a bit of a boring review but um, one thing Scooter isn't perhaps is exciting. You know I can't, I'm not going to start screaming or laughing like I have on the other ones. It's just not that sort of thing. However, what it is, it's extremely capable, extremely safe, because all you've got to think about is pointing it in the right direction, moving your hand if you want to go faster or slower, and if you really need to stop, you just hit the brakes. It's got combined ABS brakes, which means you hit the front, it does a little bit of the back. Both of the brakes are just ridiculously, fantastically easy to use and progressive, and the bike can stop. You know, I'm doing 30 here, you know, that's an emergency stop. 30 to zero in two seconds. This is bike is not getting into trouble. You'd have to ride like a complete twat to have a fuck up on this bike, to be honest. Right, actually I've just about picked my son up from college. I won't appreciate being on camera, so I'll stop it by then. I just want to show you this bike um, is comfortable, it's economical. It's very safe and I highly recommend it. It's £2,699 now, I believe. There are scooters of 125s into 3000s, and there are scooters 125 size that are cheaper. So, you really, the best thing of all, as I always say, is don't take my advice, don't take anybody else's advice. Get out there, ride them all, try them all out, 
and make your own decision as to what suits you personally. You might find something a little bit lighter, more dynamic. You might find one that's got a little bit more top end. You might be all about comfort. You might be more about looks. There's some fantastic little Repsol and Royce replica deliveries out there, uh, which you might well prefer. Now where this PCX excels is in situations of traffic in urban environments. I mean, queues is a thing of past, and you just zip, filter past parked cars, so you go straight to the front of the lights. If there's two lanes of traffic going in the same way, in a bit of a traffic jam, just go straight through the middle. In some sort of situations, you should probably go up the inside, which is uh, true of London with the uh, motorcycle ability to go up the uh, bus lanes. That's a fantastic uh, boon for motorcyclists and scooters alike. And the benefit of a scooter over a motorbike per se, one with gears, is that it's so much easier. There's no stress on your hands, back or neck or feet. And you, it's so much, everything's so much clearer, so you've got more time concentrating on cars that might be coming out of a junction like on my left here, or people who are parked, perhaps you might suddenly pull off or open the door. You've got more ability to be aware of your surroundings. Obviously with a geared bike you've got to keep the clutch in, you've got to keep it feathering. So it's just on the border of moving and stopping, being aware of the front and back brake. Let me just pull straight out in front of me. Tossa. And it's a BMW driver. Fuck out of my case, my lord! Oh shit, it's windy. Slow down a bit so you can hear me properly. So it's just as much easier in traffic situations. You haven't got a jerky throttle. You haven't got the power. So I wouldn't want to ride this in a thousand with lots of torque. Because stopping and starting would be a nightmare. And your hand will soon get buggered. Your back's going to go because you're stuck in a calm position with no respite from the wind pushing your torso up a bit. So all in all, if you're going to be commuting or doing lots of urban travelling, get a scooter. Get a scooter as well, like I did. It's a perfect second bike. It's like a mini Tourer. I think it's a town to town Tourer, or within town Tourer, I think that's a good way to describe it. Okay, it's got bugger all speed. I'll, I'll talk about the speed now actually. It does um, 0 to 10 yards as fast as a rocket. Faster than anything on the road. And I mean that in all sincerity. Then, uh, oh, it is a car turning. It's obviously letting go. Then I can zoom out. Um, now from about 10 to 25, 10 to 30, he's got a good turn of speed. And that's 25 to 30 there, and that was just going up a, a heavy hill. I'd say then from 30 to 50, it's got reasonable speed. You've got enough to overtake a 30 mile an hour car reasonably safely, if you've got the room and there's no car on coming reasonably safely, not like a sports bike, but uh, of course, but reasonably safely. However, when you get to 50, really everything then starts to go in slow motion, and any kind of manoeuvres like an overtake are inherently dangerous, because you just don't have the power to pass the car in the time needed. But at least 50 to 60 is comfortable, and it's absolutely fine for dual carriageways. 64, 65 mile an hour is absolute top end. I've done that plenty of times, even on a motorway, and your hand goes right back to the throttle, right back to the stop. And it, well, I don't really like it, it just sounds like the bike's doing more than it is happy to do. Not shouting at you or screaming at you to like, please release me, but in a more that it's just the engine notes quite loud and you just feel the bike wasn't really meant for that sort of thing. I do like to look after my bikes. So, so where this bike really pays off is the 30 to 50 zonal areas. 30 to 50 miles an hour. It's as good as anything on the road at that point in an urban environment. So if you're planning to do long trips down the coast, see your grandparents, or speed blast, it's not really for you. Although it is terrific fun. Because you just get on with having fun on it. And it's not scary. So you can still have lots of fun in it. It's still good. You can make it like a roller coaster. A roller coaster is scary fun, 
but in complete safety because you've got more chance of an accident just coming out your front door or going down the stairs. Whereas with a sports bike, you can't compare it to a roller coaster because you've got no you've got all the control and it can go wrong at any moment. So I, I just don't I think there's an argument that sports bikes aren't fun. Whereas this certainly is. Just wee -hee -hee! Wee -hee -hee! Come on, baby! Fantastic. Break! Look at that. Is that right? I'm making my way for change game, they're on the Brilliant fun. Right, speed full bikes aren't fun. They're exhilarating, exciting, adrenaline giving, worrying, <laughs> desperately dangerous, and ultimately satisfying. But uh, fun, that's what you want a scooter for. Right. I think that just about wraps it up really. So much more to say. And the seating position is fantastic. You you know you've got um, an unusual kind of board. If I sit right back on the up on the top seat, then uh, it's still comfy. How weird is that? But you've got your feet can go in different positions, even with the uh, petrol tank in front. So you can still move your legs, still move your thighs, don't get any sort of cramp. But the seat is very, very comfy. I've done um, some quite long rides on this, longer than I have ever done a normal sports bike. You don't get sore arse or vibration issues. It's pretty much the same as any scooter. Uh, perhaps the one thing you would buy for this scooter that's non-standard equipment is the taller screen. If you get the taller screen or an adjustable one, it comes up, um, you know, a good half a foot higher even. Then obviously that's going to be make that's going to make it much nicer for the longer journeys. Especially when it's windy, or the eight, eight, you know, the A's or the M roads. So that's the only recommendation I'd get if I was buying one of these, along with the top box, because with the fantastic um, space under the seat, because there's no fuel tank there, with a top box as well, you've got a phenomenal amount of storage. Right, I would filter, but uh, it's just outside of school, so there are some school kids still around, and it is uh, just past three. Got three kids of my own, so I don't take the piss in these situations. Hey, is that motorbike? He nodded back. Hey, is that because this bike with its LED front headlights looks like a motorbike and he was fooled? Or was he just polite? Bless him. On that note, with happy thoughts and a smile on my face, I'll leave you all to it. This is Aid again from witchbike.com signing off. Safe riding, everybody! Yeah. Ah!